Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the College Fund Trademark Registered OC Don't Steal. In this series I will be documenting the life and times of the American college student. In addition, uh, there will be an alarming amount of opinions, so J Jimmy's to be rustled? Does that mean dead yet or no? Uh, the monitor here will display links to whatever I'm talking about and maybe hilarious goof image, a nice may may for all the kids out there. And uh, I, I hope put out an episode of this once a week, you know, barring any complications, death, universe, existential crisis, uh, all the air molecules flying up to the ceiling, you know, everyday stuff. Really want this to be a way to have a conversation. So, right now, all that uh, exposition's been front loaded onto you. Emergency services will be coming by in case you, you can't dig yourself out. To begin. Uh, Sunday, just one week ago, the international competition for gold, silver, and bronze medals occurred and had their ending celebration. Uh, I can't show you anything or use real words because I don't want to get sued for starting the classes. You know, got to. Had to take a nice sex ed course about the about Title IX and what to do. 30 minutes, you know, in 30 minutes that's all it takes. So, uh, but the preliminary quiz meant I got 100%, which means good news everyone, not a rapist. So, round of applause. A uh, great little article in about sexual harassment, which basically boiled down to... No, we're talking about sexual harassment here, and I don't have to take it. And then there was this very weird question that uh, was like a declarative sentence, but then it ended with a question mark, and I'm like, whoa there, whoa, triggered. I'm grammatically offended. How dare you? How, how do you not sensitive to people like me? How do you not sensitive to people like me? <laughs> Shh. Just Shut up, Steve. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> Sorry. about. Sorry. Then it got even weirder. Then there was a Stick People cartoon comparing sex to making tea for friends. I'm like, okay, all reality is gone. We are deep within PSA hell. Then it ends with the narrator saying he's gonna go make tea for himself. And I'm like, did they just make a masturbation joke? I don't even know right now. And I'm like, why? Why? I'm the one that's supposed to make the immature jokes at the serious things. What's the point of hiding behind a metaphor? Like, if we're all going into college, we at least mostly stayed awake through biology, so we know how it all supposed is supposed to work, you know? You know, if we can't use the real words to describe what's actually going to happen when uh, consent isn't given, if we can't say the word rape in a video about rape, you're, you're just trivializing the matter. It's just my opinion on the matter. And then, great, top-notch, high-quality video about if, if you're a bystander in a situation if you see someone walking off with a compromised individual. Just the weirdest way I've heard someone who's just drunk off their ass. Who says compromised individual? And that also means that they know that college kids are going to drink, which is very, very interesting admission on their part. They can be honest about that, but they can't be honest about rape. Fortunately, I don't have to worry about this uh, being in any social situation or getting invited to any parties because uh, uh, sad and alone, and it took just a whole minute of this people, the worst act, is like, hey, what are you doing? Stop, man. So, is, are you Steve? Whoa! And took just a minute of just that nonsense to just characterize two points. Uh, don't be a dick and protect the lady. That's, that's not, that's their words, not mine. And a flawless segue. Calculus professor, he's a very, he's a very strange man. He, um, he opens, so he opens class, you know, it's a good time to get to know the teacher, right? He instead shows us a, a beautiful montage of professors destroying cell phones. I'm like, okay. You know, that didn't, it didn't help when he uh, emerged from his office with the lights all turned off, so that's not scary at all. Then it just keeps going, going. I'm like, I've been here forever, and time is slowing down. I can feel myself aging. I feel it's just all around me are familiar faces, or now places. This voice, which somehow does not have a, a tone, it goes beyond monotone into something that is toneless, formless, but it just reaches deep into your soul and crushes your existence to live. Okay. Uh, and then, best part is there was uh, a little, a, a, a cheeky reference in a math problem uh, about, it's like they named a, a per, they named a bank in this problem, Fermat's last bank. He's like, 
oh, that's a reference to Fermat's last theorem. I'm like, cool, let's get on to the problem. Wrong! We need to explain who Fermat was, what Fermat's last theorem was, this other guy, Euler, who created the number E. Don't ask. Um, and then the, the whole history of people trying to figure out Fermat's last theorem, because he never gave a proof. And then he's like, he goes like, then he goes into about how proofs for math are made, and how this one guy tried to make a proof in the 90s, and then he found a different proof. And I'm like, I just, I just want, this problem was about calculating interest on a mortgage payment. So now we're into how math works at the advanced academic level. It's like, what is he trying to prove? Get out. Get out. <laughs> no. Bad. Bad. <laughs> Moving on. History professor. Fortunately, it got better. So uh, he's, so, he, so he's like, yeah, I'm a pretty chill dude. And he's got that like weird man ponytail thing. But like the, the, like, like the short man ponytail, not like the long one. I was like worried. It's like, like almost a man bun. Like almost a man bun, but not quite. And then he's like, he also likes to you know, go off topic and just tell stories. But you know, since he's actually like traveled around the world and visited historical places, you know, it, it adds to the conversation. But you know, it's not perfect because there's, there's that one person sits right in the front who after everything the teacher says, likes to insert a comment, say a thing, make mouth sounds, because it, sometimes it doesn't, it's not a sentence, it's just mouth noises, and I'm like, why? Glad, just thanks. I definitely needed to hear your opinion on his time he saw an interesting thing in a historical uh, pub in uh, Ireland, you know? <laughs> Problem is, it's not like they're history buffs or anything, providing deep socio-political intrigue. No, it's just, you know, random crap. The best part is uh, the, pro the professor's face. Um, you can see him, because he's normally like, you know, smiling, being you know, upbeat and all that. Whenever whenever this person opens their mouth, you, you can just see the mask fall, like his eyes go into the thousand yard stare, and he gets that look of complete despair on his face, on his points for the rhyme. And then, then the mask comes back up, but you're like, I saw that. Even he's just cringing on the inside. Or, uh, or, or I could just be projecting, and I look like a complete jerk right now. What's the truth? You make the call. You're oh, a jerk. Get out. <laughs> I just I don't have time for your crap, Steve. Getting into the news. So I was uh, wa watching CNN the other day because sometimes you just have to pity watch CNN, you know? You just, you just feel bad for him. And so I'm watching, okay, it's a special. It's hosted by Morgan Spurlock, the guy that did that Super Size Me video that, that I swear they sh that they show constantly in high schools about the dangers of fast food while serving you the worst fast food every day at lunch. And this one was about like the various toxic substances in your house. I'm like, all right. They're discussing how there's a bunch of unregulated substances out there that nobody knows what they're gonna do. So I'm like, that's fine. I'm like, okay. They haven't gone into full tinfoil hat territory Tory, or, um, well, sometimes they've gone into deranged hippie. But th then they went to this one guy who's like, Wi-Fi and cell phone signals are giving us all cancer. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, it's, it's time to stop. Time out. Red flag. Wrong. Just wrong. It's, it's physically impossible for Wi-Fi and cell phones to give you cancer because they don't give off the type of radiation that can cause cancer. They give off the type of radiation that doesn't interact with you, so your body doesn't even care. So you're more likely to get cancer from just standing out in the sun all day without sunscreen than, you know, bathe, being bathed in this Wi-Fi soup we call the modern landscape. I'm just shocked that CNN, a professional, uh, mostly professional, a kind of professional, basically amateur media organization decided to run this story and treat it seriously. It's like like if they ran a story treating the Force or Godzilla or Pokemon as if they were real tangible things that you can go out and find for yourself. Fortunately, uh, this story has a happy ending and has less me uh, like I'm like a self-entitled asshole. Banned by several French cities on the Burkini uh, was overturned by their equivalent of the Supreme Court. Uh, for a little little background, if you uh, you know been living under a rock or you've just given up on the 24-hour news cycle, uh, these these swimsuits uh, uh, they were completely to cover a person and they were being worn by Muslim women so that they could enjoy a lovely day at a French beach and still be in in line with their faith. You know something. It's completely harmless. It's fantastic. They found a way to have a great time at the beach and not be violating their religious beliefs. Yeah, you know, but you know, apparently no. That's not harmless at all because these towns were banning them. Uh, their words were usually long durations of preventing tension or civic unrest. So oppressing a minority is like a relaxing day spa visit in comparison and not and having people see them. It's also a weird thing to fixate on, right? Like, you're not gonna ban the regular head scarf, which will be seen more often, but instead go after the swimwear, which will only be seen a, a little bit. And besides, once you go into the water at the 
beach, you're not really going to see what they're wearing. The stupidity levels are just, just rising, just rising exponentially here. Even if you're trying to play like devil's advocate, like you're all scared and you're like want to prevent panic, it just it just falls apart. You just look like the thought police from 1984 coming in when you're when you're like trying to enforce the law. It's not including all the like the discrimination that's just packed into just one law. And that takes talent to put that much in there. That is that's like voter ID law levels of discrimination right there. Congratulations, France. Positive news, because we need that in these trying times. A relatively nearby exoplanet has been discovered, and it gets better because the planet is around the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri, which means you can have liquid water on the surface, and uh, water is the key requirement for life. And since it's only 4.2 light years away, uh, which means Earth-based telescopes can start observing it now, and the more advanced telescopes we're going to be launching in the next 10 years, like the James Webb Telescope and the uh, this European program to survey nearby stars for planets, which means one might be able to fi really figure out what's going on, like in its atmosphere, for example. And if the planet is, can sustain life, if it checks all the boxes, you know, not too hot, not too cold, uh, not too hard, not too soft. You mean you might actually have a backup plan for when God Emperor Trump begins the culling. And I think, just regardless of all that, good news that we have another planet out there that could support life, increasing our sample size of things that have life on it to two. And instead of just one, because it's really, really hard to figure out what everything means when you just have a sample size of one. And uh, even if the life on said planet just turns out to be stinky pond algae, I think that's going to have some serious impacts on life here on Earth. And with that, it ends the first episode of the College Fund. Every day, the YouTuber goes without a subscriber. With just one click of that button, you can help stop this epidemic. On that, this is Brando, signing off. <laughs>